So up on the screen in the in your packet as well is the third quarter density report. And again, in January, we'll do a full analysis of what has happened over the past year and uh, trends and, and um, you know, just a, a, a more detailed report. But this is just your quarterly report about where things have been going. So preliminary plats, again, are those that you're going to see a little bit longer term, of course, um, typically. Uh, they'll fall, be followed up with phases of, you know, final plats. And um, as you can see here, um, these are kind of all over the place. Um, so if we're looking at what's going to be seen and where in the community, we're going to see them all over. Um, in the north, uh, all over, all directions. So um, down here, you can see the number of units being approved. And multifamily units is 116, and single family units are 2,499 over the past year. Wow. Um, and that is just through uh, the platting process. So, once again, a reminder that uh, multifamily can come in with just a single property and, and be built without going through the platting process. So, those numbers would not be reflected here. So, just a, a little more. Um, uh, a view of what's happening in the very near future or already occurring. The final plats are, are shown on your screen here, and we see more in line with what we've, we've seen in the past um, to the northeast and the southwest, uh, a lot of development occurring. Um, a, few, um, a, a few of these to the southeast, but primarily it's those that we've, we've continued to see, uh, the southeast and the northwest. And then just uh, a quick view of the short plats. These are typically really small, and these will typically be like infill development, and you won't see these as much on the perimeter of the city. Uh, any questions about that for me? Uh, not really a question, but kind of a comment. Okay. The preliminary plat and the final plat wound up on the same page, but the short plat wound up on the back of the first staff item. So it's kind of hard to remember to save it when it's needed for the meetings tonight. Oh, okay. Anyway, it can be on a separate page without too much difficulty. I mean, I mean, we could do a, we could do just a, a blank page, the third page in the future. Yeah, yeah. something like that. So we'll, I mean, a fourth page. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to always look at this. And say, what? Why did I save that business item? <laughs> yeah, understood. Okay, I'll try to remember to put a, a fourth blank page on there. Thank you very much, sir. Teacher, I do have a quick question okay. on the preliminary plat map mm -hmm. um towards the bottom there at the bottom of that we're just outside city limits of fernway and then yeah. fenway mm -hmm. fenway um are those annexed into the city at this point and okay yeah well he was shaking his head no so <laughs> right <laughs> so they're co okay. correct What's that so right? they're in the process okay. of getting approved um, yeah, Harvest Creek is done, but it's necessary. It was necessary to have Terrace Falls come in. So Harvest Creek was approved by city council, but the Fenway and the Terrace Falls are still uh, coming before. That's the even. preliminary part of the preliminary plats, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. That's all. Okay. We have the minutes to approve. Somebody wants to make a motion. I'll make a motion. We approve the minutes. Second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded to approve the minutes. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, minutes are approved. Report on council actions. Madam Chair. Field apologizes. He's not able to be here this evening. Uh, Madam Chair, the, the uh, report is on the 10-4 um, meeting for City Council, so October 4th. Um, we had several projects that were approved. The first one was the zoning map amendment from GB1 to IL for the Ditch Witch of the Rockies, and that was approved. Um, that one, let me give you the, the location. Uh, it's hard to tell, but 0 East Hunt Avenue, that was seen by you. Uh, the next one was a variance, which you don't typically see. So um, 
It was for a, a single property that needed a variance for a setback. And then uh, the last one was an annexation and zoning for the road rights of way uh, for the city. They did all across the city. We right. did a whole bunch of roads, uh, and those that was approved as well. Um, several ordinances were read. The one is for Chase Subdivision. Um, the second one was for Elevate Charter School. Third one was for the city code and uh, zoning, uh, or excuse me, the first reading of ordinance for, for the annexation and zoning to RS 8.5. Um, this one was for, uh, it's right off of Madison Road, pretty simple one you saw, an annexation for um, Timber Creek Recycling that got approved and the ordinance was read. The LDK Ventures uh, property on Madison was approved as well. And then, and then the code, the Title 10. So we are now using our new Title 10. Uh, when new projects come in, you might see some of the old, um, the old code being used for ones that have already submitted before the 4th of October. So you'll see a few, even tonight, we use the old code to analyze them. But in the future, you'll, you'll see more and more of just the, the new code being analyzed. So when did the new code go into effect? So it's the 4th. When they Fourth of October. It, when they read it. Mm -hmm. okay. Any other announcements or? Okay, we got one business item. Christy. Okay. Well, thank you, Madam Chair and Commissioners. Um, the request before you this evening is a recommendation of approval or denial of the final plat for Spring Hollow Ranch subdivision number three, which is located on the west side of Star Road and just south of Eustick Road. Um, it is inside the city limits and is zoned RS 8.5. It's bordered on the southeast and west sides by city RS 8.5 zoned property and on the north by Canyon County Ag property. The preliminary plat was approved by planning and zoning in June of 2019, and phase one was constructed and recorded in July of 2021, and phase two was approved in November of 2020 and is still under construction. The project proposes 66 buildable lots with 11 common lots on 20.16 acres. Um, it has been found that it is located within the city limits and is zoned RS 8.5. It conforms to the approved preliminary plat layout and it conforms to the applicable subdivision and zoning standards for NAMPA. These conditions of approval are listed in your staff report. They're the standard conditions from engineering um, with a correction to one note. Staff feels that it is appropriate for the commission to recommend approval of the final plat for Spring Hollow subdivision number three to city council with the conditions as listed in your staff report and any others that you see fit to impose. Here are your potential motions and I will stand for any questions. Any questions for Christy? No, Madam Chair, I'll make a motion that we uh, move to recommend approval of the final plat for Spring Hollow Ranch subdivision number three located at on zero Eustick Road for Kent Brown, planner who's representing Heartland Townhomes with all conditions of staff listed in the report. Second. It's been moved and seconded to recommend approval to city council. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, that will move on. Okay, we got seven o'clock when public hearings will start, so we're just gonna Hang out until 7 o'clock to give everybody a chance to get here. Can I go back and ask Rodney a question? It doesn't have to be on the record.
Okay, public hearing number one. Do we have the applicant here? Come on down. Good evening. Make sure I have this muted so we don't interrupt. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, my name is Jerem Wagner. Um, I'm the applicant for this application for the Valente subdivision request for annexation um, and preliminary plat. It is good to be before you again tonight. So, um, but anyway, just I'll just jump right into it. So I said this is annexation of 37.7 acres with an RD zoning request for the annexation annex property. Um, along with that is a preliminary plat for Valente subdivision for 115 residential lots. Um, total common area proposed is 9.3 acres, uh, just under 25% of the total area of the property. Um, and a total of 155 trees. I put that, I know uh, a couple of weeks ago, somebody mentioned about the trees, so I wanted to put that on there just so we have that number um, on that. So this is the proposed layout of the subdivision. Um, so as you can see, taking advantage of the natural features of the property, um, you have water along the, the north, uh, northwest corner as well as the irrigation along the south southwest uh, property line also. So taking advantage of those, especially that corner up there at the Eustick and north side um, to provide a lot of open space, uh, which would be really nice. Um, so just as you're driving through there, that's really the main thing that you're going to see is that big open field. And then you got that uh, irrigation canal uh, waterway right there that provides that separation to the, and then you get into the, to the homes for the property. Uh, this next slide shows the landscape plan and you can see those trees that are proposed. Um, so again, kind of shows the, uh, that open area up towards the corner of Northside and Eustick, um, as well as some interior um, common lots and uh, use for the, for the residents of the property with some playground equipment, things of that nature, um, so they can get out and enjoy that. Um, and then, you know, pathway along the, the canal on the south, southwest uh, border of the property. I um, mean, real quick, and I'll, we'll get into some of the pictures as well, of the proposed homes. Um, along the east boundary, and I want to make sure I touch the right button. Does this have a, well, it probably doesn't show up too good on it, does it? So I guess that's true. So the, the property is on the east side. Um, so not the, the skinny ones in the very, not those ones, but just down from there. So those on that area are proposed as um, duplexes um, for the property. Um, that is the reason for the RD zoning. And so we do have some pictures to show you what those proposed duplexes will look like on that because I know pictures are worth a thousand words. People want to see what it's going to look like. Um, so this just shows the um, city of Nampa uh, zoning for the area. Uh, as you can see, so the property um, is at that northeast corner um, of UCDEP right there. Um, and then the existing zoning, uh, a few weeks ago, uh, we were here for the property directly to the north. That was proposed uh, RD zoning for Wood Poppy subdivision. Um, was recommended the subdivision approved and recommended approval of that annexation and zoning for RD uh, for that property there. Uh, and this shows the future land use map for the area. Um, as you can see, the majority of the area, the property included, is shown as medium density residential, so we do comply with that with this request. And these are um, just, some show, just to show you what the proposed homes will look like on the property. Um, so just a few of these uh, to kind of give a feel of what the subdivision will look like. Um, as you're very well aware, this area is growing rapidly. I drove right by there on my way here. Um, several homes under construction to the north uh, for that uh, subdivision and growing and increasing ever more. And this last one here shows, and this is the one I really want to show, is those duplexes. So as you can see, it's designed, constructed, really to give a single family feel. So if you're driving down the street, um, there's a good chance that you would think that those are two single family homes. Uh, the way that it's designed and laid out on that. So that is the proposal for those duplex lots of what they'll look like um, for that subdivision. Is that a double car or one and a half? So that is a double car garage um, on that. So just your standard double car. Usually that's 18 feet wide on a standard double car garage for each of those. And that concludes um, uh, my report and I would stand for any questions. Any questions at this time? Okay, we might have some when we get done with staff. Very good, thank you.
Okay, thank you, Madam Chair and Commissioners. Um, the request before you this evening is for recommendation of approval or denial for the annexation and zoning to RD and the preliminary plat for Valente subdivision located on the southeast corner of Eustick Road and South Northside Boulevard. The property is currently in Canyon County and it is within the city's impact area. The adjacent uh, northwest parcel, um, and I think that there's a typo um, in, the, in the staff report, the northwest adjacent parcel for annexation it path will be zoned RS 8.5. Um, to the north, future um, RD at the Wood Poppy subdivision is pending city council approval. To the south is Ag uh, Canyon County. To the east is Ag Canyon County. And to the west is single family residential that is in Canyon County. Um, the city does have sewer, water, and pressurized irrigation that have adequate capacity to serve this property. The nearest fire station is two and a half miles away with a six minute response time and the nearest police station is five miles away. The applicable regulations for annexation that need to be considered in your decision are listed in your staff report. The applicable regulations for the zoning that is proposed are also listed in your staff report. So there was a little bit of correspondence received. There was some public input from the neighbor to the um, southeast. Uh, Chris Simpson has requested a solid privacy fence to protect the large irrigation pond on his property. And according to the landscape plan, there is a six foot privacy fence um, proposed at that location. The building department had their standard comments, uh, the parks department with their requested easement for the pathway. Um, CenturyLink Highway District number one asked for some uh, right of way dedication for the roundabout, the future roundabout proposed at Northside. Engineering Division had their standard comments and Nampa Police and Fire had their standard comments. So the land uses in the area consist of rural single family lots and agricultural land at this time. The nearest zoning designation is RS7 and RS8.5, mostly are all pending single family development. Um, the zoning request for RD is because the developer intends to construct duplex units along the east side of the property in block six. Um, it also will hold the development to a flat 7,000 square foot lot size for all lots, even the ones with the duplexes on them. Um, the future land use designation is medium density residential, which is the two and a half to eight units per acre. The Valente subdivision is proposing um, 3.05 gross density and 5.9 um, net density. This will be in the Valley View School District. Ridgeview High School is 0.8 miles away. Sage Valley Middle School is approximately 1.3 miles away. And East Valley Elementary is directly north at 0.3 miles away. Um, Compass has done an analysis on this and has indicated that more jobs are needed in this area. And fortunately, we have some industrial coming into that area very soon. Farmland is being consumed by this development, but there is also 1,267 acres of farmland within a mile of this project. The nearest bus stop is 1.6 miles away. The nearest park is 1.9 miles away, and the nearest grocery store is more than three and a half miles away. So because the proposed development is slated for development in the RD zone, all standard lots shall meet or exceed 7,000 square feet in area. Um, currently, just because I think uh, CAD tends to round up or down to the nearest number, um, they need to make a couple corrections on some lots just to get them up to that 7,000 square feet. Right now, the smallest standard buildable lot is at 6,846. Um, they have indicated that they would make the changes to that lot, so with those changes, they, this plat will be compliant. Um, due to the RD zoning request, there's no compatibility requirements at this time. They have met the lot widths required by code. They are required to dedicate um, 50 feet from the section line of Northside Boulevard and 50 feet from the section line of Eustick Road. And then um, also some additional right of way at the intersection of Northside and Eustick as stated by the highway district. Um, the landscape plan was uh, reviewed and approved by the Nampa Forester. And um, he spoke about the pathways and the amenities that are being proposed. <clears throat> the conditions of approval are listed in your staff report and include those items that were that came out of the correspondence from the agencies. 
This is your potential motion for the annexation and zoning, and this is your potential motion for the plat. I will stand for any questions. Any questions for Christy? Okay, we'll open public hearing. Okay, on the sign up sheet, I have Jerem on here, which <laughs> got you. And then we have Brian Person would like to speak. <clears throat> When you come up, give us your name and address for the record. Is that going to work? A little bit more. How about that? Is that? That's better. If I lean forward? Yes. <laughs> okay. I am uh, Brian Pearson. I live at 17754 Polaro Way just to the west of this uh, proposed annexation. So um, some general comments and maybe some specific comments. Do I have a really short period of time? Three minutes. Yeah, I'll have to hustle. This strikes me as a quantity over quality proposal in that the density um, of single family homes is, is already at the standard and then crowding those in with duplexes uh, pushes it even more. Um, I'll let the schools and others speak for themselves. I'd like to zero in on traffic. Um, these folks will primarily use Eustick to north side for egress. Uh, when you all were considering the Heartland subdivision just north of there in 2017, the staff report to you on Heartland said that at, in 2017, that intersection was already beyond capacity. And the staff report said that Napa uh, streets and roads would be signalizing it and widening it by the end of 2020. So you've got Heartland that went in, you've just approved 72 more um, du or, uh, fourplex units, and now this. So you've got roads that are already over capacity and no end in sight. Um, from a safety standpoint, the subdivisions that are being approved 20 and 40 acres at a time along the Midland Road corridor Many of those go east on USTEC. They back up a half a mile at the intersection. They use Polaro Way as a cutoff. That's right through our street. Um, the only trouble is they forget that it's not a 45 mile an hour speed limit, it's 20. So that's a safety issue. Um, so those are the primary concerns. I think my time's probably about up. Before your hearing, you talked about out migration. Since you all approved the the industrial complex to the west and south of us, five folks have left, sold out and gone. Two more are going up for sale soon. So that's an indication of how they felt about that. So. When you signed up for the proposal, did you sign in the wrong spot? Are you for or Absolutely against? Absolutely against. Against, okay. That's what I wanted to clarify because that's what you were yeah. saying. It's, I'm, I'm sure you hear this all the time, but we've got an infrastructure challenge in front of us today. Why make it worse? Subdivision by subdivision by subdivision. We're, about, we're 15 years behind, so why exacerbate that? The folks who profit are long gone. Um, they get an unlimited amount of time to propose. I've got to live with it forever. I get three minutes. <laughs> it's just, think of that in terms of a civic process. It just doesn't make sense to me, so. Okay? Okay, yeah. thank you. That's the only person signed up. Is there anybody present that would like to testify on this matter? For the track, Daniel, can you address the traffic, the or the signal that he's referring to? I'm, I'm, Madam Chair, I've been pulling up the. Uh, the Heartland. Um, Daniel, you want to close this? Oh, <laughs> okay. Madam Chair, I've been pulling up the uh, comments on the Heartland subdivision, um, and I don't see anything in the city's memo talking about a timeline of 2020 for that intersection. Okay. Um, we are currently. Um, working with the highway districts. Um, at this point, the city only has one 
leg of that intersection within our jurisdiction. Um, and so we have been working with the highway districts uh, to work on the corridor study and identify funding for um, those uh, intersections. Um, the future industrial development will likely drive um, those improvements coming sooner than later, um, but we don't have specific plans on a date for that intersection. Um, we are working with the Nampa Highway District on the intersection of Cherry and Northside, or Cherry and Northside, um, on a cooperative agreement that will be going before council and their board here in the next month, I believe, uh, to fund that intersection. Um, so the improvements are coming. Um, I, I just don't know specifically on this one when we don't have a firm construction date on it at this point. Okay. But there wasn't a date promised I, before. I don't see that in there. Okay. That likely is referencing kind of the time frames in the transportation master plan, which are um, not firm basic, based on funding. Um, and so that, that may be what that's looking at. Okay. No. Oh, no. Oh, no. You always catch heat every one of these meetings over with the traffic. And I understand that, and I understand people's frustration. But is there something that you're working on right now that we can say, like, hey, this is happening, this is getting better here versus not over there? Um, so, so we have, I believe, nine intersection projects under... Uh, design and at various stages of construction. Uh, the most recent one that was just completed is uh, Lone Star and Middleton um, was just completed um, there by the middle school. Uh, oh, the, nice. the highway district this coming spring, I believe, will be starting the uh, Orchard and Middleton one. Um, and so then the other, inter other intersections we currently have under design, um, Midland Lake Lowell is obviously um, one that is, the design is nearing completion. Um, we have some right of way to acquire and then construction should start this coming spring. Um, Idaho Center Cherry uh, is under design and we have most all of the right of way acquired for that one. Um, and then there's various others throughout town that, that we're working on. Lone Star on. and uh, Middleton, it's by the school. Mm -hmm. Have you had a chance to look at that turn, uh, the right turn bay? So that, that we haven't looked at that. Like I say, we like to let the traffic settle in for six, eight weeks before we look at, you know, fine tuning modifications. So that hasn't happened yet, but that it is, it is in the. Lock on. It's, it's in the, you know, in the morning, it's not so, so dire, but in the afternoon, it really gets looking at it in the morning and say, oh, this looks fine. No, we, we look at it throughout the day at all the peak hours. I have a quick question. <clears throat> so in reference to the gentleman's comment about where he lives, and I'm looking at this on the map, and, it, you know, he, he, that little neighborhood that he lives in off Olera Drive, it's like nothing else around it right now. It's just out there by its own. Is, would, is there any way, and I don't know if this would be legal or not or if you can do this, but... Would there be any way to, to post like a, a not through street or something or no through way on that street? Because it does. I can see how people would just. The just city right has no jurisdiction over that roadway. That it was oh, a so. highway district roadway. And um, they could approach the Nampa Highway District for some signage that might help um, okay. alleviate that. Um, obviously, if people. It, it won't eliminate it. It won't eliminate it, out. but it may. <laughs> It may out. reduce it, but that, that is something that the city does not have jurisdiction. Okay. Thank you, Daniel. Any questions for the applicant? Okay, I would entertain a motion to close public hearing. So moved. Second. Okay, so we moved and seconded to close public hearing. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, public hearing is closed. There's two motions.
Don't everybody talk at once. Well, well I'll make a motion then. If nobody has any comments. Okay. I will first make the motion on the annexation. So I move to recommend approval of the annexation and zoning to RD. Uh, zoning district at zero Eustick Road, 37.72 acre parcel for Jerem Wagner and Trilogy Development representing Corey Barton Endurance Holdings with all conditions listed in staff report. Second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded to recommend approval for the annexation and zoning to RD. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. To go along with that, the, I move to recommend approval to uh, City Council for subdivision preliminary plat for Valente subdivision for 115 single family lots, 18 common lots at the same parcel for Jerem Wagner and Trilogy Development representing Corey Barton with conditions listed in the staff report. Second. Second. Let oh. Michelle have it. <laughs> Okay, it's been moved and seconded to approve the preliminary plat, or recommend approval for the preliminary plat. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, that will go on to city council, and um, if you want your voice to be heard there, you can attend that meeting, and you'll get a chance to testify again. Okay, public hearing item number two. We have annexation and zoning to BC and IL and RS6. Do we have the applicant? Come on down. Good evening, commissioners. Uh, I'm Jane Suggs, Jim State Planning, 9839 Cable Car Street and I'm here representing Trestle Creek and the Trilogy Development. Um, first, we're gonna to go to the first map, which is an area map with showing city limits. Oh, do I get to do this? Okay. <laughs> there we go. Um, this is an application for annexation and zoning for 46.45 acres on the south side of Eustick Road between Franklin and Prescott Lane. Um, unlike the last application, we are not asking for a preliminary plat subdivision at this time, just annexation and zoning. As you can see from the slide, Nampa is growing um, to the north and east of Trestle Creek. Um, Trestle Creek is contiguous to the current city limits, will provide for orderly development of the city, and the requested zoning designations are consistent with the comprehensive plan future land use map. Let me take a look at that map. Here is the comprehensive plan land use designations. I put those on there. The um, Nampa comprehensive plan designates the property as both residential mixed use, which is most of the site, and some community mixed use. Um, the residential mixed use should include both residential and housing such as single family detached and some multifamily, and should include some non-residential uses. That's according to your comprehensive plan. The community mixed use should have uh, commercial uses, and those are specifically called out to be along transportation corridors with easy access, and this is on Eustick Road. This use also encourages higher density housing. And I think if you um, look at our mix of zoning designations, you'll see that we're providing a really exceptional mix of residential and non-residential uses. So I'm gonna show you what that zoning map looks like that was in your Staff report. We are requesting that four and a half acres in the northeast corner be zoned for community business, which is the BC zone. And this area is located along Eustick Road and will be adjacent to what we're hoping will be a future access from to Eustick. There will be light industrial um, on the northwest corner, that's 3.66 acres. And this zone actually covers an existing uh, landscape business that's already there. These non-residential uses will be supported by a really good mix of residential use. The single family homes will cover about 22 acres and these will be located around the perimeter of the property, kind of in the purple. 
Um, this is good compatibility with the Meriwether Park uh, subdivision that's across the Purdom Gulch to the south. We're also locating some multifamily homes, um, both fourplexes and townhome styles along uh, Eustick Road and in the interior of the site. So you can see we've taken the more dense stuff and put it um, kind of in the interior. Um, this, uh, this area for the multifamily is about 16 acres. Again, these are proposed uses that are in harmony with the city's comp plan. They are compatible with land uses that exist and also will be compatible with the uses surrounding the property when they develop if you follow the comprehensive plan. Um, in our application package, we did include legal descriptions for each of the various zoning designations, and we also included a draft development agreement. We also sent a courtesy letter out to the neighbors within 300 feet to let them know that we plan to annex the property. Again, we are only requesting annexation and zoning at this time. You will get to see a preliminary plat. It'll come back to you before we do anything to change the site. Um, Owen, we agree with the conditions of approval in the staff report. I should have started with that because that lets you breathe, right? Um, I do respectfully request that you um, recommend approval of the Trestle Creek annexation, zoning designations, and our development agreement. Um, and I'll stand for questions. Yeah. Did you get any responses from the neighbors about the annexation? I didn't get any responses, but there are some gentlemen here that I've just spoken with, and okay. they would like to talk to you about that. Um, and again, um, we will be coming back with a preliminary plat, so some of those issues um, regarding accessibility and, and connectivity might be best handled at that time. And the landscaping business, was there any nursery attached to that? It was just their operations? It's just their operations. I didn't know from behind you. Um, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, operations and some equipment, and um, yeah. So we wanted to make sure that they were included in the appropriate zone. Um, thank you. Ready? Yep. Okay. I'm just waiting for you. Sorry, Parker. <laughs> Tension was just building. <laughs> um, the request tonight is for annexation uh, only, uh, no subdivision. The uh, zoning BC, IL, RMH, and RS6. The surrounding zoning to the north is in the canyon and uh, Canyon County, being uh, single family homes. To the south is RS7. To the east is in the county and to the west is in the county. Uh, services are all uh, available. I shouldn't say all. The city uh, has water and irrigation. The uh, regulations for the annexation are those in the staff report. Um, it is um, have a path of annexation to the south. Um, the conclusions of law are in the staff report as well. The Permitted uses for the uh, area in the RS6 zone, uh, single family dwellings are permitted. Um, we are kind of in a uh, situation where we've adopted new codes, so the incoming subdivision will have to follow the new subdivision codes uh, when they are submitted. Um, a single family dwelling, two unit, um, if those are planned, would require a conditional use permit in the RS6 zone. Um, three or four unit uh, townhouses are permitted use in the RMH zone. Uh, multifamily is calculated at 6,000 square feet for the first two units, first two units and 500 square feet for each. So that will be the, the limiting factor in the RMH zone. Um, there's a, a restriction on height that would take place where the RMH zone is within 100 feet of an RS district. Um, within 50 feet of the RMH property, they'll be restricted to 30 feet in height or three stories. Here's a breakdown of the percentage of each zone. So the BC zone, there's 9.7%. IL is 8%. 
RMH, there's 34.8%, and then RS6, there's 47.6%. Here's a uh, site map. Um, this is uh, still being ironed out, out as the applicant has dated. Um, so this would be, uh, could be included in a uh, development agreement if you wish to add that. Correspondence, building department had their regular correspondence. Irrigation district, uh, there's an easement 16 feet from the top of bank on both sides. Mm -hmm. Engineering division, um, there's gonna be some sewer um, work that will need to be worked out. Um, the right of way has yet to be dedicated, so there will be 50 feet right of way dedication. The land uses uh, in the nearby area consists of single family homes and some ag land to the east and west. The city limits are to the south and that's the Meriwether Park subdivision and, and that is zoned RS7. Uh, the comprehensive plan has it designated as residential mixed use and community mixed use. Um, as stated before, there's no subdivision proposed here so in the future, density of the RS6 portion of this uh, proposal will be restricted by the RS6 zoning subdivision standards in our new code. Um, the uh, NAMPA has determined it's in the public interest to provide single family de uh, development opportunities. The nearest schools, Ridgeville High, Ridgeview High School is 1.3 miles. Sage Valley Middle School is 1.7 miles. East Canyon Elementary is 0.4 miles. The compass analysis indicates that more jobs are needed. Uh, and there's farm land being consumed here. Um, nearest bus stop is 1.8 miles. Nearest park is 2.1 miles. And nearest grocery store is 3.6 miles away. This is the from the comprehensive plan, the description for residential mixed use. Um, it goes through the housing types that could be seen here. There are single family detached, live work units, multiplex units in a village setting, uh, high density residential with retail, commercial street level storefronts, um, artist studios, et cetera. Um, there's a, we, uh, it calls for a mix of commercial units with the residential mix units. The conditions of approval are then the staff report, uh, as well as any that you would wish to add. And there is a potential motion for you. Uh, there's a typo there. It's, um, it needs to be changed on there, but it's correct in the staff report. Uh, and I will stand for any questions. I've got a question, Parker, um, and maybe for Rodney too. So in the compass analysis, and I, forgive me if I'm mistaken, but I am hard pressed to remember um, any of their analysis on any subdivision that didn't say more jobs are needed in this area. What's the thought process or? The, I'm not sure how they calculate that. So, so what what they're doing is, if you look at a uh, a good mix of um, residential and commercial and industrial uh, job centered um, development, they they see that a lot of our growth is based on single family development, um, and so th what they're saying is these areas need closer, uh, they need proximity to these other sources, jobs and, and retail and, and commercial. Um, and so they're, and, and how that helps Compass is that you're traveling a shorter distance to those locations, putting less traffic on the roads. Getting rid of the urban sprawl, and I, okay. yeah. That's, I just wanted to be clear on that. That's mm -hmm. what I Thank you. All right, let's go. Well, can I follow up on that? Mm -hmm. um, correct me if I'm wrong, Rodney, but this is this is a mixed use. So we're having businesses there up at the front end along Eustick, I believe it was. Um, 
So isn't this cre isn't this exactly what Correct. we're looking for? Yeah, and uh, and I should have made that clear. Um, what they're doing is they're looking at the existing conditions right now, right. and they're saying there needs to be more. Commercial. Right. But this is more. a step in the right direction. It, Amy that's Thompson correct. Is saying it's adding 200 jobs. Yeah. I mean, that's better than the last subdivision we just did. Mm -hmm. They weren't adding any jobs. Right. So right. 210 is better than zero. Yeah, and, and those are generalized. I mean, they're not going to be specific right. to this right. um, yeah. project, but yeah, you're right. Okay. But well, we are going in th this this subdivision is going in the right direction. It's a mixed use. Okay, let's go to public hearing. I have uh, Jane on here. Yay. Um, anybody else want to testify for the proposal? Okay. We have some people signed up against. And we I think it's Jerry Osborne. Yep. Come on up and give us your name and address for the record. It's uh, Jerry Osborne, 76 by five East Shields. I'm a couple houses actually past um, drill yard. It's not so much that I'm against it, I'm just got some concerns. And one of them's the traffic. Because if I'm reading the map right, there's two ways in and out of there. And we've already got another subdivision or kind of east of us that the homes haven't even started which is kind of adjacent to 11th Street, but there's no, that we know of any exits or entrances come from 11th Street coming into that. So everybody's gonna be using drill yard. And the street's not very wide. You put two cars on there, you can't get two cars down the street. So um, that's the biggest concern that, and I mean, I, Got my little pet peeves about the size of lots because there's a lot of kids that play in the street. The lots to me are kind of small. Be nice to see maybe if he could expand the size of the property, you know, maybe give people a little bit bigger yards for their kids. So, but um, that's my main concern. So. Okay. But uh, appreciate the time. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Mark. Marks. Hi, I'm Mark Marks. I live at 7634 East Rillard Street in the Merriweather Division. My concern is the overgrowth of the infrastructure of so many homes. We already have all the trucks going down East Rillard Street to the East um, New Development. There's kids out in the street the speed limit should be 20 miles an hour. These guys are driving, the contractors, subcontractors, and uh, suppliers are driving over the speed limit, causing dust everywhere. Our homes are getting just, everything's getting dirty. They don't do street cleaning. Um, now this is going, my property backs up to this division. I bought my property thinking that we're going to have you know, nice, plain, quietness behind us. I know the growth is growth, okay? I was a builder for 40 years, so I understand this. But the way they're doing it is wrong. I mean, there's a street right, one house from me is called Seaman. And who in this city would approve a name of a city, of a street called Seaman, first of all? Okay, second of all, I'm one house away from the corner, and that, they say, is going to come across and go into this new development. That's going to bring more traffic into our area, Merriweather Park. They're going to be going up and down East Villard or going to Franklin, which is over an abundance of traffic, plus you with the kids in the neighborhood. I think this is, you have to have more outlets and inlets for this division not coming into Merriweather Park. Okay, we'll ask the developer about that. And that's what my concern is. Plus, this, this last statement of saying you're bringing in um, work, I think that's all BS. Then you could you be some commercial property. It's not going to take any traffic away. If anything, it may bring traffic in because if you got commercial property, now you're bringing more traffic in to the area to use this commercial property. I think the the the, the division should be changed. Personally, no townhomes because that's more rental property. 
That's going to bring more families switching in and out instead of established homes. I think the whole thing is, is wrong, it has to be rethought out. Maybe a bigger park for kids to play in, give back, make, make it you know, with tennis courts and soccer fields, something better, release the commercial property and make it more um, residential homes instead of townhomes. Okay. That's my point. All right. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Daniel, I'm not going to try and pronounce your last name because I think I would make it. <laughs> Wrong, Daniel. You stay over there. <laughs> My name is Daniel Bugley. I have lived at 74, 93 U Stick Road for over 28 years. I have countless man hours into this piece of property. And now that I'm getting ready to retire, you're inviting a thousand new neighbors uninvited. Uh, growth is coming whether we like it or not. Mm -hmm. The high density at this end of town I find appalling. I am saddened by the destruction of rural life in Canyon County. There are many evenings when uh, it takes me, the, the traffic backs up to my driveway. I'm just to the east of this proposed project. There's a good many nights the traffic is backed up to my property now. There's a good many nights it takes me, I'm less than four miles from downtown, it takes me better part of 30 minutes to get to town now. Now you, you're gonna wipe out the rest of you stick road. I find this very troubling. Uh, I'm sure the little guy's gonna get run over. I, you guys are in an unenviable position dealing with property owners. It upsets me that people have grown up in Canyon County, can't afford to live here because they can't afford to compete with out of state money, taking up all our farmland. I would propose that if this project goes in, that there'd be a berm around it, at least six foot tall, a fence on top of the berm, at least six foot tall, and trees on the berm. Like I said, I have many, many years of hard work in my property, and I don't want a thousand new neighbors coming in to uh, look, see what's going on in my home, see what's going on in, in my garage. Uh, growth's coming, like it or not, but the people that live there now don't like it. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anybody else present that would like to testify on this for, against, or undecided? Okay. Jane, do you want to come back up and address some? Thank you, Commissioners. Jane Suggs representing Trestle Creek. Um, I did talk to Jerry and Mark right before we convened our hearings tonight, and I gave them my phone number. Um, one of the things that I think is kind of important that the code has changed, so we will be having a neighborhood meeting prior to a preliminary plat. I believe that's already in your code. So that would be something that we would want to talk to them about. Um, and I do understand when they say there's one way in and one way, one exit to the north and one to the south until other properties develop. Um, we might during our preliminary plat, want to talk about phasing and when that happens and units that can be built until certain connections can be made. But those connectivity, that connectivity is really important. I mean, it's not cheap to build a to street over a canal, the Purdom Gulch Canal. So, you know, if we didn't have to, that'd be great. But we think that connectivity is important. Um, I do think, as was just recently discussed, this is exactly what you want to see in this kind of area because that commercial area could be very much um, offices or retail, things that could really service not only this area, but also the folks that live around us. Um, so I, I understand that um, we will be building our streets to the standards that are required by the city. So certainly we won't be cutting corners on that. Again, this is sort of um, an example of what could be built. Um, we do agree with all the restrictions on the RMH for 30 feet and for the RS6 requirements. So we don't have any trouble with those. Um, and um, I think, whereas yes, we do have some townhome type lots, um, we're finding out throughout the valley that that's one of the ways that we can actually build, uh, get people into some home ownership and actually build some equity and wealth. Um, not everybody can afford a 7,000 square foot lot with house on it because those are the ones in this area that would cost you hundreds of thousands of dollars. Not that these smaller ones aren't gonna be some in that range, but um, we are finding that out. And also um, because we're right up on Eustick Road, it just makes sense to put some possible rental properties. Those are two story 
fourplexes. They will not be three-story apartments. So at least that is our plan at this particular time. And we'll come back with examples when we come back with our preliminary plat. You have to do a traffic study. We will have to do a traffic study when we do our preliminary plat. Um, unfortunately, we were kind of planning to go with the preliminary plat, and so you might have seen some numbers. We don't have those tied in. I think there were 200 plus units, and we're, we're not tied into that right now. So we will be coming back to you with a preliminary plat, subdivision plat. So it will look a lot like this. We'll have the, the actual landscape plan, um, and we will be tied to this general these zoning designations and this general plan through a development agreement. So that will be in place when we come forward. Any other questions for the applicant that we have her up here? Okay, thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Motion, we close the public hearing. Second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded to close public hearing. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, public hearing is closed. I like all the multiple uses they have. That's a yeah, good combination. It's, it's not the best, but it's better than a lot yeah. of other ones that we've seen. It's it's in the right direction. Um, I think that if the developer is listening to us, they'll do what they can to make it even more so um, to create more jobs in the area. The jobs is, is key. You can keep people home and won't cause so much traffic on the main, major streets coming in and out of the city. Agreed. So if anybody has no more comments, or not any more comments, Madam Chair, I move to recommend approval to the annexation and zoning to BC, IL, and RMH, and RS6, all locations within four parcels numbered, so on and so forth, uh, for Trestle Creek subdivision, uh, mixed-use development, including commercial, industrial, multifamily, multi single-family, attached, detached, and open space land uses for Jane Suggs slash Jim State Planning, representing Endurance Holdings all conditions listed in the staff report. Second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded to uh, recommend approval for the annexation and zoning. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, that goes on to City Council. Okay, public hearing number three. The commercial kennel license. <laughs> Hello, I am Jennifer with Ida Elite Yorkies, and I'm getting my kennels license because I didn't know I needed one. Address, please. Uh, 407 South Banner. Um, I have two champion males, two champion females, and two other girls that are now with the handlers to work on their championship. Um, I am genetic test and health test on my dogs. Um, my house was also broken into a few years ago, so I do have a protection dog to protect me in my house. Um, getting this kennel license means a lot because this is what I do and this is what I love to do with my dogs. Um, when animal control came to my house because I had a barking dog, I got everything completed within the first week because that's how much this means to me to get this completed and done. Um, I didn't know I needed pictures or a slideshow or I would have had <laughs> pictures of the dogs in the ring <laughs> and my and my setup. Yeah. Um, my dogs, my setup is in my house. Mm -hmm. um, I do, it's living room and family room, so I have part of it is I do have kennels. So when I need to kennel them up, they go in the kennel. If not, they're in the house and in the backyard or the front yard. I have a fully fenced yard. Um, I also have a privacy fence around my front fence um, to eliminate the barking when they do a do bark. Um, some of my dogs already barked, which being in the show ring, they, the requirement with the handlers, they have to be. So if they're up on the table, they're not all barking when the handlers with other dogs in the ring. Um, so I do have that where dogs are, most of my dogs are quiet. 
besides mastiffs. Um, just getting this kennel license would mean everything because this is this is my life. This is what I do. So you've been doing this for how long? Six years. And this is the first you've heard you needed to have this license? Yes, ma'am. That's and why when she told me, I did my rabies, licensing, everything within the very first week. And Officer Lincoln, she said she was impressed because I did everything instead of waiting the 30 days for her to come back, like everything was done. So they came out because of a noise complaint and that's when they found out you didn't have a kennel license. Correct. Okay. Correct. But everything with the city now is fine except for this license. Correct. Okay. So I also went ahead and applied for my business license as well because going through all this, I didn't know I needed that as well. So that's all done. Okay. All right. So well, my we, puppies are, when they are sold, they're sold nationwide. I do my own deliveries. Um, and I have a wait list, mm -hmm. which is nice to know. Yeah. <laughs> you had a question? Yeah, I do. Um, it says that, um, and you, you addressed this partially, I think, but it says your Yorkies are debarked. What yes. exactly does debark and how do you do that? Uh, I don't do it. There's a vet in Cascade that goes and they do remove the vocal cords. So when they do bark, it's <laughs> type noise. It's not a full on bark. This is not hurtful to the dog? Nope, it's, or... they're done in surgery. So they're put to sleep. Um, they do have pain meds afterwards and they have cough syrup for at least a week. You get that for kids too, do you think? <laughs> right. <laughs> so, but I. Yes, some dogs don't have it, but a lot of show dogs do in the show world for the tiny dogs that are up on tables. I've kind of wondered, I've, I've watched the kennel shows, you know, and, and it's like, you never hear any barking. It's because they're debarked. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of the now. small toy breeds, when, you, when there's a handler with multiple dogs on a table. Is that expensive, something like that? Yes. Uh. Yes. Um, I have my girl that's in there right now. It is... $345 is the board fee, just boarding, $40 a, a week for grooming, plus the expenses to go to travel to the shows, $125 a day per show. So if it's a five-day show, it's 125 times five. Um, and then if there's any ma uh, majors, they get bonuses. Once they get their championship, there's a bonus. It's, but it betters your program when you have okay. champion dogs. Thank you. You're this, welcome. This is your livelihood. This is it your is. source. Income. It okay. is. Um, I got in a car accident back in 2011. I'm 100% blind in my left eye due to the airbag. And I also have a tumor below my brain that I've been dealing with. So trying with all my medical stuff I have, it's hard to go get a job that wants to deal with my medical stuff I have. So this is what I do. And when I do have a puppy that's sold, I, divide, I divide that up per month, and that's kind of what I live on. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Rodney. All right, Madam Chair and Commissioners, um, I, I think you've heard the, the request here. Our, our code requires a, uh, a license, a kennel license for up to eight dogs in an RS6 zone. And uh, so this property is at 407 South Banner Street in an RS6 zone and is required to get the, um, the kennel license for up to six dogs. Um, quick overview of the property in the area. Uh, this is in uh, the comprehensive plan designates this area as medium density residential. As you can see here, it's completely surrounded by that medium density residential. Zoning is RS6, a little closer view of that, but um, again, I, Pretty much everything around it is, is RS6 zoning. Um, the history, it was originally developed in the historic Kurtz addition plat in 1905 and subsequently split as a corner lot, being a substandard lot size of just under 4,000 square feet. Um, public utilities and services are available to the property and already serve them. Uh, this is a quick aerial view. You can see the the lot there, it is a substandard size um, because it's a, one of those corner lots that are split. Um, however, they do have, and, and, and we see this a lot, we see where um, the yard goes out into the right-of-way by quite a bit. Property line is back here. 
but the yard is extended up here. And as I, I believe she mentioned that there's um, a fence that that encloses that uh, that yard area. All the way up to the street? Yeah. Yes. Okay, so applicable regulations for a conditional use permit. Um, you've seen these before. Um, in order to approve a conditional use permit, you have to find that these things are true. And I've highlighted some of those areas that you'll need to consider. Uh, that's in your staff report. Animals and, uh, uh, and bees section of our code. And this section talks about kennel non-commercial um, and gives the, the conditions here. And I just wanted to point out that the six months of age are included in this number. And so if there's, if there's any dogs or puppies younger than that six month, it doesn't count against your, your eight, right? That was a question that I had, so thank you. You bet. <laughs> uh, schedule of district land uses, here's where it points out that they need a kennel license. Uh, the building department had their standard comments about section or, or title four, um, not really applicable in this situation. Uh, public comments, we had seven additional comments that we were received this morning. All of these comments were in support of the business and, and you should have those all on your desk before you. Um, a variety of comments, but essentially saying that they keep their property clean and it's well maintained. Um, that they don't have concerns about uh, about that property being there. Uh, at least one of those was a, a neighbor that I could tell. Uh, most of the other ones seem to be from um, from customers. And uh, again, they they just comment that it's clean and well maintained. Uh, staff analysis. So. Um, in the area, it's primarily single family, as noted. Um, you'll need to determine whether the eight existing dogs on the property and the additional puppies are an appropriate use on this small property with the little yard. Um, it is a small yard, but again, there's that larger portion in the front that, uh, that gives a little more room than it uh, initially appears. Uh, comprehensive plan, future land use map, that it's typically single family. Um, public interest, uh, I just wanted to outline, and she said this, but I just clearly state um, that what was in the application, there was one full grown female Mastiff, one Mastiff puppy, I believe, and I'm not sure the age there. Five months. Five months, okay. So that wouldn't count against that eight. Two Yorkshire Terrier males, two Yorkshire Terrier females, and then two other Yorkshire Terrier dogs, and I didn't know the gender there. Females. They're what? Females. females, okay. And um, and as she mentioned, some some Yorkies debarked, um, and the their breed dogs they breed their dogs one time a year. Uh, so conditions of approval are pretty simple. Um, uh, number two, I'd just like to point out, be issued for the property and the applicant only without ability to transfer the conditional use permit to anybody else or another location. And then any other recommendations you have. And here's a potential for your motion for your consideration. Rodney, I have a question. Okay. Um, the applicant stated that they have been called upon by animal control because of barking dogs. Do you, does the city, does anybody besides the applicant check up to see if there's been any others? Do we, do we check with animal control? And, oh yeah, we went out there once, but we went out there 17 times before that. Yeah, so we, we send out these uh, projects for their consideration and typically we'll get a memo back. Um, their, I think their memo, and I think it's in your staff report, but um, you just stated that there's... Portland? Excuse me? You're talking about the one from Scoglin? Mm -mm, that's a police department yeah, one. Yeah, right. Okay. So um, the one from the, from the canine. From code, code compliance, yeah. Okay. Um, they typically will, um, they will make it, you know, make their comments that way, just a memo back to us. And that's how we typically know what's going on with the property. I didn't see that in here. Mm -mm. Okay. 
So I would assume there wasn't any, otherwise they'd probably say That's something. That's what I would assume as well. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. There's nobody signed up to testify for the public hearing. Is there anybody oh. present that would like to testify or against or undecided? I have a question for the applicant before you. Hello? Yes. Yes? Yes, this is the Kyra Collins. Did you ask for me? For to testify? On the kennel license? Oh, uh, yes. For Jennifer Mall? Yes. Okay. Can you state your name and address? Um, my my name and my personal address, well, my name is Ikara Collins, and you want my address or Jennifer's address? Your address. My address is 4410 Markstone Ridge Lane, Rocheron, Texas, 77583. And you want to testify on behalf of Jennifer? Yes, I do. Okay, go ahead. Okay, I live in Texas and I purchased um, four dogs from Jennifer. And um, since I live in Texas, Jennifer has had to fly the dog to me, but she does allow me to do FaceTime. So we will FaceTime weekly so I can see the puppies as they grow. Each time that she's allowed me to FaceTime her, her home has been clean, immaculate. Even if she's going through the cleaning routine, she shows me how she cleans, what products she uses. Um, she even um, is very particular about how she has them on a grooming regimen, and she always used to buy new toys for them, um, and she is really into making sure they stay engaged and socialized and things like that. And so she's really given her life to these dogs. Um, every dog I've gotten from her has great temperament, um, and um, they're not super barkers, and um, I just wanted to let you all know, like I've seen her day to day. I've seen her routine. She's explained it to me. I see how the adults live, how the litter of puppies live. I'm sorry, baby, um, <laughs> making noise in my background. But um, I, you know, when she told me what was going on, you know, it's really unfortunate that, you know, she's going through this. I know she's really stressing her out, which also stresses your dogs out because they can, they're Yorkies um, really, you know, can understand and, you know, a great emotional support animals where they, they understand what the owner is going through. So I just wanted to testify that I don't live in Idaho. I live in Texas, but, um, you know, she does allow me to FaceTime when I'm purchasing a dog from her. And I've seen it from the time the dogs are born until um, they're 12 weeks old when she does fly them to Houston, how she raises them. Well, thank you very much. You're welcome. Is there anybody else online, Rodney, that... <laughs> That surprised me. <laughs> we have a new system, so we're trying to figure this out. Uh, new system. That's the only one we don't recognize. Okay. <laughs> All right. If there's no other public testimony, I would entertain a motion. Me, wanna, oh, you want to ask uh, her a question? Okay. Question. Would you mind just a quick question? <clears throat> How long before, and I didn't finish my, oh, how long before do you um, sell the puppies? 12 weeks, 12 to 14 weeks. Oh, okay, so you don't have them very long at all, and then they're. Correct. No, people want them when they're young. But the YTCA standard, which is the Yorkshire Terry Club of America, their standard is minimum 12 weeks, but I keep till 14 to see if it's going to be a show quality okay. or if it's going to be more pet quality. And then I have show homes where I would actually place the dog where they are actually going to be showing the dogs. Okay. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. I'll move to close public hearing. Second. Okay. It's been moved and seconded to close public hearing. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. Public hearing is closed. I think that's great. And I think it shows a lot that she responded quickly yep. to the city. Yep. I think that shows a lot of integrity and that you wanted to make things right, even though you didn't know <laughs> what was going on. So I appreciate that. It's, it's apparent from written testimony, from testimony that we've received, that you care deeply about these dogs. You take care of them. Uh, the place is clean. There's been no other testimony. Yep. 
proposing. But she wants to hear the motion to. I'm getting to it. I want to make sure, this, make sure that it's on the record. That's what I want to make sure it is. <laughs> All right, I'll get to the motion. Jeez. Okay. Um, I don't think you have to worry about that. But uh, I'm going to move that we approve the conditional use permit for a commercial kennel license for up to eight dogs in an RS6 zoning district at 407 South Banner Street in the Kurtz Edition subdivision for Jennifer Susan Mall. Case been moved and seconded to approve the CUP. All those in favor? Aye. Any, oppo Aye. any opposed? Okay, now I got to read the little CUP thing here. <laughs> this CUP will become effective 15 calendar days from the date of this hearing unless an appeal has been filed with the Planning and Zoning Department with the appropriate fee. No action should be taken on the CUP until the appeal period has concluded. The applicant must confirm with planning and zoning staff that there have been no appeals. So somebody would have to spend their money to try and stop this. So you just need to call planning and zoning 15 days and make sure everything is hunky-dory and you're set. Calendar days. All right. Or just continue what you're doing and then find out what... <laughs> there's been an appeal filed. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Next one up is annexation zoning to R6 and to connect to city utilities. Do we have um, Mr. Diaz or here? Yeah, Martha. Martha, come on up. Give us your name and address and tell us what you want to do. Yeah, my name is Martha Diaz and I live at 907 West Greenhurst Road. And we just want to do an annexation at this time. Okay, trying to hook up to city services? Correct. So do you have a well that's failed or septic No, tank or? sometimes you, we've been living there 18 years and we just wanted to get city services now. So. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Want some good water, and you want a new library card? <laughs> do you pay library for a library card now? No, I do not. It'll be free for you when you yep. get into the city. Yeah, <laughs> worth it. Worth it, very much so. Yeah. Okay. Well, we'll hear from staff, and if we have any questions, we'll call you back up. All right. Okay. All righty. Thank you, Madam Chair and Commissioners. The action requested is for annexation and zoning to RS six. The uh, future land use map, as it designated as medium density residential, the surrounding zoning, RA and RS6 to the north, uh, those are single family homes. To the south is RS6, to the east is RS6, and to the west is county, being a single family home. Utility and emergency services are and can be made available. Uh, the applicable regulations for annexation are in the staff report, as well as the conclusions of law. Correspondence, typical board building department correspondence, the engineering division. Um, the, the right of way dedication would be 40 feet from the section line. The uh, lumen has. Uh, stated that there are potential conflicts with facilities on the north side of the property, um, and they just want to see the plans and make sure that those aren't uh, uh, encroached upon. The proposed use matches the surrounding area. The future land use designation, uh, medium density residential. The RS zoning district allows for the single family development. The density proposed, uh, being that it's one house on there currently is 1.02 dwelling units an acre. Um, obviously, that's below the medium density residential. Um, upon future development, they would need to uh, meet our zoning standards. <coughs> the conditions of approval are in the staff report and any that you wish to add, and there is a potential motion for you. And I will stand for any questions. Uh, Parker, I have a question, if I could, please. What you just mentioned about Lumen, 
Um, it says in here that if there is any construction to the north side of the property that could affect our cabling, the customer needs to send me a full set of plans. You didn't, the customer needs to do that? We don't do that. The lumen isn't necessarily involved in our building permit process, so it would be upon the customer to. You know, Does the customer know they should do that, or are you going to tell them, or you send them a letter, or how do they get notified of this? I don't want them to come down the road and say, well, they never told us their plans, and now they have to pay us $10,000 to fix it. Right. Um, the Lumen is, is not really a, a city utility that we get involved in, so it's kind of up to them to it's them. Lumen the uh, applicant yeah, to work that out with Lumen. Are you aware of that, ma'am, that you need to? Okay, can you come up to the microphone? And Madam Chair, we'll, we'll put that in the action letter if those conditions get approved, uh, that okay. they need to do that. Okay. Um, where we live, it's a very busy road, mm -hmm. and we get a lot of traffic. And um, I don't know if there's anything um, the city can do, because sometimes when I'm getting out of my house, Sometimes it takes me five to ten minutes to get out. Right. And then sometimes to get in. And, you know, and Green, um, and Midland and Greenhurst, there's a subdivision going on. Yep. And it's <laughs> like, wow, bumper to bumper. And I know they did some work recently on there, and it's, you know, it's better. But right. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, and another thing, there's a lot of people crossing, and we do not have a sidewalk. So is that a, is that a city uh, thing they're going to be doing, or do you know? With her annexing in, what do, is she going to have to do an LID or? So the, the city would not automatically put a sidewalk in there. Um, if we have a roadway project widening come through there, at that point we would install a sidewalk. If the property owner is interested in having one installed in front of their property, we can work with them to do an LID where they, the city finances it and they pay that over a 10-year period if they want. But it would just be in front of their house. There is adjacent sidewalk oh. where the subdivision is to their east, but likely it would only go then just in front of their house and not extend to the intersection until such time as the city does a widening project through there. Oh, well, this is concern for people that actually, kids that are walking there, sure. you know, it's, I mean, I don't understand why we have to just, you know, pay. I just thought I brought it up because I do see a lot of kids and they don't have a lot of space. Sometimes they have to go in the yard to cross because they're afraid to get run over by cars. Yeah. Stuff, you know? <laughs> so anyways, I just thought I asked. Okay. We close public hearing. There's no one signed up. What? I don't, I don't think we have anybody signed up. Right, nobody signed up. I, I said that from prior. Yeah. And then they wanted to ask her a question. I'll make a motion we close the public hearing. Second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded to close public hearing. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, public hearing is closed. Madam Chair, I'll make a motion that we move to recommend approval of the annexation and zoning to RS6 single family residential um, to connect to the city utilities for um, Jose L. and Martha Diaz uh, with all conditions of staff. Second. Either Brent or Michelle gets a second. Um, been moved and seconded to um, 
approve the annexation and uh, zoning to RS6. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? <coughs> okay. You'll get a letter telling you what conditions you have to do with that Lumen company and, and if there's anything else. All right, thank you. Okay, next up is a conditional use permit for a duplex. Do we have the applicant here? I'm on Microsoft Teams. Awesome. Go ahead and give us your name and address and tell us what you want to do. Sure, so this is Julia Morrison, 829 17th Avenue South. Um, basically, we are looking to get a conditional use permit for a duplex on a lot at 1119 South 10th Avenue South or 10th Avenue South. Um, and do you have all the information for that with the aerial? Do you, you I can um, attach anything right. to the Microsoft team. So I wasn't sure what, how you wanted me to do that. Staff will show us the photos and stuff. So they're okay. in our staff Perfect. report. Perfect. <laughs> okay. So that it's a vacant lot right now or. Yeah, so it was, um, so kind of what we've done is we've been building in Nampa since 2012, and we like to find lots that are, you know, need to be rehabbed. So this was a house that had been burned down and um, for quite a while, and they just couldn't repair it. So we purchased a lot, went and demoed it, cleared it off, and then we um, like to build really nice duplexes on them in Nampa. Okay. So. All right. Well, we'll hear from staff, and if we have some questions, we'll call you back up. Perfect. Hey, Rodney. All right, uh, Madam Chair and Commissioners, this is for a conditional use permit for a duplex, uh, two family attached residential dwelling in an RS6 zone. <coughs> Pardon me, at uh, 1119 10th Avenue South. Um, just an overview of the property. The comprehensive plan designates this area as medium density residential. Uh, the current zoning is single-family home uh, RS6 zoning, uh, completely surrounded by RS6 zoning. And uh, property size is 0.16 acres. Um, the proposed use is to demolish the existing single-family home and construct a new duplex on the property. Uh, services to the, to the property are, are already there. Uh, history is in 1959, the Waterhouse subdivision was approved and recorded. So here's a original elevation and, um, and then the site plan, uh, the originally proposed um, site plan um, or, or building plan, I should say, kind of layout of the, of the, of the building. And as you can see here, the uh, carport was um, to the right over here and um, and so I, I believe the, the, they were proposing to have the front of the uh, property over here, the first um, duplex face the, the main road there, and then the alley would be the, the carport access. However, um, we received new layout of the project, and so uh, I believe I see, received that yesterday. And here's the revised site plan that they provided. Um, and this one was with a garage, showing a garage. And then I, um, I would assume then that the access would be from the main street, I think it's on 10th, and then the alley to the back for the second uh, duplex. Uh, and it would be mirrored. And we may need some, a little bit of clarification there but um, from the applicant, but I believe that's what they're proposing. Is there a garage for each unit? Just mirrors on the other side. I believe that's the case, but that's yes. something, yeah. So here's an aerial view of the property. And, and again, this property or this building would be uh, torn down and then uh, the duplex built in its place. Applicable regulations are those you've uh, seen before. Uh, the land use table in 1032 uh, requires a conditional use permit uh, for duplex in the RS6 zone. And then 1025.4 are the conditions for uh, approving a conditional use permit. Um, building department said that they need to file, follow Title IV. 
Uh, engineering had several comments. One was that uh, it'd be required to go through the building permit process, and we look in, into detail about um, all the details there. So access, um, you know, uh, the, the connections to city utilities, um, all of those things will be looked at at the building permit process. Um, utilities are available, and they recommended that those, um, they encourage that they utilize the existing pressure irrigation and sewer services, um, and then that each dwelling have its own metered water service. Um, and then they speak about the improvements. Um, as the, the applicant of the last project was questioning, um, when, when we have development occur, so when there's a, a construction on the property, then that is when we require the, the sidewalk improvements out in front. So in, in her case, in this last application, it was, a, it was done in the county already, just coming into the city. So no requirement for a building permit except, through, um, except for utility connections. And so um, we typically don't see the sidewalk improvements and the street improvements until um, actual construction. Uh, of a building. Um, so that's the, the situation there. And then their last comment is driveway access to the lot will be per our current access management policy. Again, reviewed through the building permit process. Police department did review it and, and I have all their numbers and everything up on the screen and in your packet. But I did wanna just point out that, um, that they, they were basing it off of a two unit um, project coming in, and I know this is small, but I just want to clarify that there's already an existing single unit on the property, so really their, their impact isn't as much as even they're saying, even though this is really small too, but I just wanted to clarify that. Um, and then last of all, there was a neighbor that was concerned about the ability to pull into the alley without hitting vehicles across the alleyway that are parked there on a regular basis. And they um, asked about where garbage cans would be placed and whether they would interfere with neighbors' uh, vehicle access onto the alley. Um, so land use analysis, this is our staff analysis. Um, land uses, there appears to be no duplex in the immediate area, but there are. Uh, there is a, a duplex a short distance to the northwest on 9th Avenue South. Um, and duplexes are used in single family areas uh, all the time. They increase the density a little bit, um, but they're intended to be low impact uh, to the single family developments. Our comprehensive plan uh, lists duplexes as an allowed use in the medium density residential um, designation. The schools in the area, Central Elementary, West Middle School, Nampa High School, all within walking distance. Our correspondence Again, I, I talked about the police department. The next one is the public comments. Uh, and I just wanted to point out that the site plan provided does, does show, did show a carport, but uh, was revised. And we, we don't really know the impact of getting on the alley until we have an actual building permit and site plan. But they will have to follow our standards for access uh, onto that alleyway. So I don't anticipate a concern there, um, but that will be analyzed in full detail at, at the building permit stage. Um, and then the question about the placement of the garbage cans, I, I think that's probably a, a question directed at the applicant. And then um, project specifics, no amenities or significant open space, but this is just a small development duplex. I've listed the conditions of approval, or recommended conditions of approval, if you choose to approve this. And here are a, a couple of potential motions for your consideration. Okay, for public hearing, we have uh, only one person signed up to speak. Madam Chair. Uh -huh. I'm sorry, I forgot to mention that we did receive a comment on this one this morning. Um, and this was from Carl Green. He lives at 1111 10th Avenue South. And that was the 
Oh, actually, I think this is already covered. I think I included this uh, these questions in. Oh no, this is a new one. Sorry. Um, so he says that I would not like to have a duplex on my street. There is not enough parking as it is. We live in a single family housing and would like to keep it at keep it that way. If all the parking is in the alley, that means that there will be more traffic in the alley. So if there is a vote, I and many of our neighbors vote no to to the duplex. Thank you for your time. So Carl Green. Sorry. Okay, so we have Steve McGuire. Hi, good evening. Um, I am Steve McGuire. I live at uh, 1124 10th Avenue South. Now, but I'm right across the street from this proposed duplex. Um, this is a historical district back here. We would like to keep the homes that way. That's very important. That's why we bought our home over there. It seems like these small developers like to come in and slowly chip away at these distressed neighborhoods, and we lose the flavor of our historic homes in our historic neighborhoods. These are narrow streets, dirt alleyways. Parking is crowded. When you have a project like that with a garage in the front, you're taking away another 25 feet of street uh, curb. Or if it's in the alleyway, I don't know. It doesn't seem like they're decided on what they want to do. Um, you know, the alleyways are narrow, the jiggy jag, trash cans, garbage, cars. It's, it's a really tough situation. When you go from a single family to a duplex, I know in a single family you're required to have one covered parking and one and two off street parkings. So now are they going to have two covered parkings and two off street parkings? Well, how are they going to do it? It's a 50 foot wide lot. So the parking situation is really bad there. I mean, people fight for parking on these narrow streets. And we're losing our, our old neighborhoods. I mean, they've knocked down the trees on that property. The old house was gone now. Um, also, when you have uh, multi-unit buildings, you bring in more crime. And you don't have people that are in, totally invested in the neighborhood or community. They come, they go, they come and go. I can show you pictures in my neighborhoods of owner unoccupied homes that are a disaster with all the cars, all the trailers, everything in those neighborhoods. I've complained to the city for two years now. Within a, hundreds of feet of my home, I have 27 vehicles that are disabled. And just these transient people and these owner unoccupied homes just bring in a different element. And so to allow a high density or another a duplex, I, see, I don't see where they're parking. It's not conducive to the neighborhood. It's a historic neighborhood that should be really respected. It is, it's not these little developers just come in there chipping away at it. Um, so I just ask you to please consider the historic nature of this neighborhood, the lack of parking, the terrible alleyways, and, uh, you know, I'm all for a new home in there, but not a duplex or anything that brings a double, you know, living situation there. Because two, two families end up being four families in my neighborhood. So I, just, I thank you for listening to me. Thank you. Is there anybody online to testify? Is, is that a historic district? Because I don't think, I thought the historic district was different area than that. There's That's correct. All over my neighborhood. So the, di the historic district is a specific zone we have, mm -hmm. and they have specific conditions. But this is the old part of town, town that's the uh, old Nampa neighborhood mm -hmm. um, that is not zoned, the historic. Okay. Um, so it doesn't have those same conditions on it. As okay. a historic district would. But as far as but as far as design elements and buildings elements stuff does does would you know that or would we need to go to another? So when when a, a property has been designated as a historic property, it has specific conditions regulated by the state, mm -hmm. and 
Um, and when it doesn't, in, in this situation, it doesn't, okay. um, you're not going to have those same requirements. Okay. Different between a historic neighborhood and a historic district. Historic neighborhood, that's what yeah. I'm saying. Okay. Um, okay, Julia, we have some questions for you. Absolutely. So um, I completely understand where the neighbor is coming from. Um, we actually built at 620 South 10th Avenue, which is the historic district. And the first plan that I sent over actually went through very rigorous um, planning and zoning meetings and city council meetings to get approved for the historic district. And that right. is actually was two years ago and um, increased the values of all the homes around the neighborhood. Um, most most of the time we keep our investment properties that we're building. Um, we did end up switching to this new plan with a garage just based on kind of adding more value to the property. There will be the garage and then the driveway. So they won't be parking in the alley or, you know, they'll have plenty of room on the driveway and the garage, excuse me, the garage to park their vehicles. So we've, you know, we've, we've had really good success. We did um, the same first plan at 515 15th Avenue over by NNU. We did two different ones over there. Um, initially, the neighbors all kind of complained because everyone has this issue with duplexes where people are coming in and it's a transient feel. But in actuality, the way we build our duplexes is it's it's like a home. There are four bedrooms. They have a master bed, master bath. They have a huge great room. So people actually move in there and they live there. We don't have T tenant turnover at all because these are not the cheap chintzy duplexes that people are in and out of paying 500 bucks a month these are people who you know either are moving into town and they can't find a house yet or you know maybe they just don't want the upkeep of a home and they want to live into a duplex and not have all that you know major upkeep to take care of and just pay the rent so was there a garage for each unit Yep. So it's a basically a mirror. So if you flip it, the garage is on the other side and then there will be a driveway. So it's if you see where it's kind of lined out on the other side, it's just a mirrored image of that duplex. So there will be a garage and a driveway on 10th Avenue and then there will be a garage and a driveway on the alley. Um, so there's plenty of room for them to keep their garbage cans, you know, in inside the property. They won't have to, you know, and the people that we would bring into this type of duplex, which it's a higher end duplex, um, you could look at the exterior design, like it has lots of features, lap siding. I mean, it kind of fits in with the historic district. The type of people that are gonna move into this duplex are gonna elevate the neighborhood. They're not going to bring it in and increase the, you know, broken down cars on the streets for sure, so. Any other questions for her? I, yeah, I, I do. Um, when you were here before, you mentioned that you had another one of these, and I, I believe I remember it too, and because the layout of this is, looks very similar to what you had before, and we asked you to upgrade the trim on the outside of the house. Is, is this, are you the same lady I'm thinking of? Yep, so that's the first plan that we did with the carport. We can't fit garages on there. Okay. Um, so that's why we, we kind of adjusted the, this plan to kind of make it a little bit more luxury. It's kind of a two-story with a nice garage, nice size garage. Um, so yes, that first one is the one that you guys approved for the historic district on 620 10th Avenue South. Okay, and and well, well, we asked you to make it look like a little bit different, so it wasn't just like the, the same old, same old everybody else has got, and you did that. Correct. And it looked really nice after we got finished with it, so I, I would encourage you to do the same thing, and then we can move forward for other projects because we know you do what we ask you to do. Right, and this one is the same. If you look at the exterior elevations yeah, that I, um, I provided, the, I mean, it has the same type of shake lap siding. I mean, it's got the, you know, the traditional shakes on the top. We've got the pillars, the old school front porch where they can, you know, have have seating out there. It's, it's you know, the the second one. That so that's the first one with the carport. If you flip to the second elevation, so there should be. It's a two story with the garage. All right, you can do that. You got my vote. Okay, yeah. I mean, we've, we've, I mean, we've, I mean, it takes a long time to get approval to do this kind of stuff because you do have to prove yourself as a builder. And I mean, we've been, we really put a lot of pride and effort into our build jobs because we want to, we're, we, we're Nampa, you know, people, we've lived here our whole lives. Like we're trying to build up the neighborhoods as well. We're not in it to just build some crappy duplex and then sell it, you know, like we really care about Nampa and, and rehabbing it. So. Hey, thank you. Yep. Okay. Is there any motion 
this motion right here. So moved. Second. Like motion of public, public, public hearing. Oh. <laughs> All I heard was so moved. Well, he, he was whispering. <laughs> it's been moved and seconded to close public hearing. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Aye. Any opposed? Okay, public hearing is closed. Madam Chair, I'd like to make the motion then to move to approve the condition use permit for the duplex, uh, two family attached residential dwellings at an RS6 zoning district at 1119 10th Avenue South for the Morrisons. Any conditions applying to that? Doesn't say that. Second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. There, there are conditions, I'm sorry. Aha, uh -huh. so then adding all conditions set by staff. Mm -hmm. Wilson. Okay, still moved and seconded that way. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, I get to read my little CUP thing again. This CUP will become effective 15 calendar days from the date of this hearing unless an appeal has been filed with the Planning and Zoning Department with the appropriate fee. No action should be taken on the CUP until the appeal period has concluded. The applicant must confirm with planning and zoning staff there have been no appeals. Thank you. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Have a good night, you guys. You too. You too. All right. On to the next one. Okay, final one up tonight. Conditional use permit for a home occupation firearms business. Applicant is online. Online again. All right. Go ahead and give us your name and address and tell us what you want to do. Good evening, Council. My name is Jason Baralt. I reside at 6489 East Monroe Street in Nampa. I'm here to seek authorization to conduct a firearms accessory business for my residents. My business will be ran from my garage, a single vehicle space from a four vehicle garage sectioned off. It will contain an added wall, locks on the interior garage door, two security doors, security cameras around the house, as I already have a home security system already installed in the residence. Can you guys hear me okay? Yes, we can. Okay. Type of business, online sales of firearm accessories, such as firearm parts, holsters, cleaning supplies, lights and such. There will also be your occasional firearm transfer, meaning if someone buys a firearm through an online firearms dealer, the buyer, the buyer can have the firearm shipped to me. I'll run a background check. Upon approval, the buyer will pay the transfer and background check fee, and I will release the said firearm into their possession. If the buyer was not approved for the firearm through the background check, the said firearm would not be released to them. Inventory. The only inventory I will have on the premises will be firearm accessories, but all sales will be done online. I will have no live firearm inventory, meaning my residence will not be a storefront. My business cards will not contain my address. For the firearm transfers, it will be done by appointment only, and only at that time will my address be given out to the buyer. Uh, as of right now, I have my certificate uh, filed uh, through the Secretary of State. I also have my Idaho State Tax Commission seller's permit as well as my federal firearms license. So I'll leave it open to any questions you might have. How many times will somebody be coming to your house to pick up a gun? A month? Uh, that's dependent on who has a firearm transferred to me. So that can be anywhere from zero to maybe a couple times a month. So less than three times a month uh, is, that's, is, is pretty safe bet. Yes, ma'am. Okay. All right. Well, we'll like hear. Said, it's more of an online firearms accessory business than it is uh <laughs> live firearms themselves. Okay. All right, well, we'll hear from staff and we may have some questions for you in just a little bit. Okay. All right, Christy. 
Thank you, Madam Chair and Commissioners. The action requested from you this evening is approval or denial of the conditional use permit for a home occupation firearms business located at 6489 Monroe Street. I do want to take a second just to make a couple corrections. Um, one, the notices that were sent out indicated that it was in an RS6 zone. It's actually in an RS7 zone. Just want to make sure everybody's aware of that. And under the CUP criteria that's listed in your staff report, there is a copy and paste error. It states that it's for multifamily. It actually should just say the proposed use. So just to clear those two things up real quickly. Um, 6489 Monroe Street is in the Canyon Creek subdivision, actually known, marketed as the Fairhaven subdivision, west of Canada Road and north of Cherry Lane. The property is located inside the city limits, zoned RS7. It's bordered on the north, south, and east sides by uh, RS7 zone properties in that same subdivision, and on the west side by Canyon County property. So home occupations are defined in 10.1.10 that allow some level of commercial enterprise to be conducted within a residential dwelling. Some of these home occupation proposals may require special consideration because of the nature of the use and therefore are required to obtain approval through the conditional use permit process. There are specific conditions in place for these home occupations that would be effective regardless of whether or not a conditional use permit was required for the use such as the allowable sign sizes. Um, home occupation cannot exceed over 25% of the area of the home. Um, no outdoor display of goods, equipment, or materials. One commercial vehicle on, may be allowed on the property. No employees are allowed. The use cannot create traffic in excess of that which is found in a residential area. The building shall retain its residential appearance. The use shall not create noise, vibration, glare, fumes, odors, or electrical interference and garage sales are limited to three days, um, three days once per calendar year. Home occupations can be revoked with two written complaints causing the applicant to come back and request review by you again. In that case, you have the option of approving it to continue, to terminate the CUB completely and, um, and the home occupation therein or let it continue with additional restrictions or conditions that you place on it at that time. So 1025 sets the criteria for evaluating the approval of a CUP request, must be um, compatible with the abutting properties, must maintain a convenient living and working environment, and will enhance the successful operation of the surrounding area. The only correspondence we received was from the building department. Um, the surrounding land uses are single family homes when um, Canyon Creek is finished being built out. To operate a home occupation, the owner agrees to follow all the city requirements in 10110. Um, if they do not operate within these parameters um, and there are complaint procedures followed, then they will be before you again. Um, let's see. The home occupation code was added to city code to allow smaller businesses to operate at a smaller capacity that may not survive outside of the home. These home occupations operate with limitations that prevent residential areas from being commercialized. If businesses can operate from a home while preserving the residential nature of the neighborhood, it could be in the interest of the public. Um, in this case, no employees will be permitted to work on the premises, so no additional parking would be required. There are some conditions of approval that, will, um, that are included in your staff report and will be included in an action letter to the applicant and any others that you may choose to impose. This is your potential motion and I will stand for any questions. Christy, just, just clarification because I don't want to stand, okay? Um, it says that this is for Jason representing Meredith. Why is it stated like that? Why is it not just Jason? When the, the owner, property owner uh, associated with that property is Meredith. Ah. So the person living there probably has some kind of relation, but the listed property owner is Meredith. Okay, but Jason is the one that's applying to do the work at the Correct. residence. Mm -hmm. Okay, makes sense. Okay, let's go to public hearing. 
I have three people signed up as undecided. Any judgment there? I don't, I don't know. <laughs> Only three yeah, people you sitting we here. Sharp, huh? <laughs> okay, we have two that don't want to speak, Ron Glazer and Liz Rush, but Wayne Rush would like to speak. You must be the spokesperson for your little group. <laughs> you are charging them, right? I, I'm, I am charging them a lot. Uh, so first, my name is Wayne Rush. I reside at uh, 6466 East Monroe Street. And uh, first, I want to thank you folks for your work. Uh, I've spent my career in education the past 14 years as a superintendent. And uh, I, I was bothered deeply to see a 253-page report before you tonight <laughs> that you had to read. So uh, although I've done that to school boards uh, before, so I, uh, I feel for you, to be honest with you. And I thank you very much. Um, this is a brand new neighborhood. Uh, these homes were, were just finished in April, so we just moved in. Uh, and I, I want to first just say that I, I wish the very best for this, uh, for this firearms business. I would like it to be successful. I support my neighbor in, in, uh, in his uh, wanting to have a successful business. But I do have concerns I would like to bring up about it being a residential neighborhood. And so that's why I'm, I'm not opposing it. Uh, in, in that sense, but I just would like to express those concerns. Um, my concerns is that if it's a really successful business, it may not fit in a home occupations uh, setting it, if it uh, actually did really well. Uh, as you know, it requires a, a, a special use permit. That's why we're here tonight. And the six, nature of a successful firearms business has the potential of being one that is incompatible with residential living. Depending on how the business is, is run, it could be a storefront requiring uh, site sales and transfers. Now, he stated it, it won't be a storefront. I, I believe it very much so. I went over and talked with him this afternoon to, uh, the, about this, uh, that he doesn't want it to be that. But I think it's important that it has the conditions on it so it doesn't end up being a, uh, a storefront. Uh, the applicant states that it will uh, open an internet firearms business uh, it would indicate that it would only have online business. However, federal law requires that firearms businesses must have a permanent residence and a transfer all the transfer of firearms and have to be conducted at that residence. So at this place is a home residence. So that would be a part of his, mm -hmm. his licenses. So any local sales that he has, even online local sales would be there or uh, the sales as he mentioned, uh, from other dealers that would be out of state making a sales and transferring the gun to him so uh, somebody could transfer it to the actual individual. In the uh, home occupations allowances uh, in frequent residence or, or out of home sales, for out of home sales, in the recommendations from the uh, staff report, it says only occasional firearm sales shall be permitted to be conducted on the premises. I would like to suggest that you, you expand that to say uh, that uh, it includes any firearm sales and or accessories, as that's the nature of the business. So it isn't just the firearm sales, but it actually includes all of his sales should be. Uh, uh, and I think that's the intent, but sometimes it's nice to be specific. Um, the other uh, nature of the proposal business of firearm sales and accessories is just the safety as aspect of, uh, of the nature of this business. And I'm not opposed to, to the gun business in any way, shape, or form. But it, if there's home storage or, or storage for ammunition, those types of things, it needs to be done in a safe manner. Um, this business, if you look at the application and the, uh, the business, it's in a garage that's what's going to be. At the current time, that garage is a part of a four-car garage. There is no separation or wall or security between any of the other aspects of the building. And as uh, he, he just stated, that he plans to put in a wall and to make that a secure structure. So my recommendation would be to add that to the conditional use permit, that, that it becomes a secure area, a secured area, rather than just an open part of the garage that's open to the other areas from that part. So with those two uh, recommendations, uh, I, I must admit I'm conflicted, right? I just bought a brand new house. Uh, uh, if it's infrequent sales and, and it's happening twice, three times a month, I won't notice it, won't be a problem, right? It's not going to be an issue. If it turns into a very successful business and there's a lot more traffic than that, then I think it would be an issue and a concern for anybody in the neighborhood. So 
I, I have that conflict within me, but I don't want to oppose it. I want the business to be successful with him, and I want the online as aspect to be very successful <laughs> from, that, from that part. So I appreciate being able to come and talk with you tonight and to, to share my thoughts. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Can I, can I explain something to you, sir? Or, or not explain, but give you some information. We have been doing this for years. And I always wonder, what in the world are all these people doing with all these firearms? <laughs> I mean, we do more firearm sales than we do dog kennels. Yes, that's right. And it's, it, we have, it's a condition of use permit. So if something goes wrong, we can withhold that permit. We can take it away from them. Yeah. We have never once that I know of ever taken one back from anybody on a firearm sales. They are told they can't store ammunition. If, if they have ammunition, the fire department has to get involved to check on the storage of the ammunition. So these are relatively very safe operations. We have them all over the city. I mean, there's dozens and dozens of them. Um, if we ever go to war, I'm going to look up some of these people and <laughs> <laughs> find out what I could get, you know, to protect myself. But uh, honestly, you don't have to, I don't think from experience, you have to worry about this not being a good place to have a, a business like this because we will be watching it. Our staff does. Uh, if we get complaints, we will come, have them come back and talking about it, so. Well, and I appreciate that. And actually, that's, I mean, that's why I went and talked with my neighbor, wanted to know what was going on and felt very comfortable about the process. But I also do think it's nice to have the ability to express my concerns. Absolutely, and, absolutely. And to, to present those. Yeah. So thank you very much. I appreciate it. You're quite it. welcome, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody have any questions for the applicant? I do. I just want to clarify some, something for the, with the applicant. You still there? Yes, sir. Okay. <clears throat> so you will have, because um, I think the, the gentleman who testified makes a good point. When you have a garage that's open, and I think this happens in most houses, my kids open the garage door and it's open, <laughs> I don't know how long. And uh, and so that exposed, what, however minimal that inventory might be, is there going to be, a, all that's going to be secured into a, in a safe within the garage? <clears throat> Well, sir, I have, uh, I don't know if you guys have, sorry, I have both my earbuds in. It's kind of, I'm, I can't hear myself talk. Um, I don't know if you folks have the, uh, the, the schematics there of my four car garage. Right. Um, there is a two car garage door and then a single one onto the right hand side. Now that single one is only big enough for one vehicle. So that one uh, that I'm speaking of is going to have that sectioned off wall. Uh, the garage is going to have interior locks onto that said garage door, so it cannot be opened. And it will have two security doors, one going from the uh, proposed uh, location to the outside, and then one from the proposed location to the other part of the Three car garage. All right. and, um, and I, I do have a safe inside that is strictly for ammunition. That's my own personal ammunition. And um, I will be getting another safe for, um, you know, whatever other parts that are uh, uh, high in value or the firearms that will be getting transferred over to my house. So everything will, will be securely locked away. All right. Thank you. I appreciate the clarification. Any other questions for the applicant? No. Okay. Make a motion. We close the public hearing. Second. It's been moved and seconded to close public hearing. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Public hearing is closed. Well, since everybody's jumping in on this, uh, Madam Chair, I make a motion to approve the condition use permit for a home occupation firearms business in a RS7 single family residential zoning district at 6489 East Monroe Street for Jason. How do you pronounce the last name? Bureau. BJ. It's uh, the J silent. Okay. Uh, for Jason Baralt, representing Meredith Baralt. And with all conditions of staff and conclusions of law, 
and do we want to add in any of those recommendations from the? You're making the motion. What were they again? To close <laughs> off that part of the garage. Yeah, cl you will close off what you said you were going to do anyway. So we'll just make it part of the motion. Um, so if for some reason you run out of funds, you might be in trouble. So make sure you get that done, okay? Yes, sir. That was all uh, on account of uh, this all getting approved. Because if if I wasn't able to do so, then there would be no reason for me to lose space, lose space in my garage. <laughs> okay, sounds good. We have a second. I'll second. Okay. So moved and seconded to approve the conditional use permit for the firearms business. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any what? opposed? No. Okay, now I got to read my CUP thing again. <laughs> this CUP will become effective 15 calendar days from the date of this hearing unless an appeal has been filed with the Planning and Zoning Department with the appropriate fee. No action should be taken on this CUP until the appeal period has concluded. The applicant must confirm with Planning and Zoning staff that there have been no appeals. And that concludes our meeting for tonight. Thank you, Council. Thanks for waiting.